Well, good morning, everybody, and I'm sorry I missed uh, your initial testimony. Um, I thank you for the work you do, and I thank you for being here. Um, I wanted to start, uh, Ms. Day, if I could, uh, because I do understand that in your testimony you brought up the need uh, for the TSA PreCheck program to be fully supported and expanded. Um, I'm from New Hampshire, and at our Manchester Boston Regional Airport, we've encountered challenges ensuring that we have enough TSA personnel on the clock to keep our pre-check lanes open. Uh, so our local TSA team is doing absolutely the best it can, but when they face resource shortfalls, um, it's a problem for them. When TSA reduces its staffing levels, the airport has to shut down pre-check lanes temporarily. That means the passengers who would be in that lane merge into the regular lanes and give up some of that expedited screening privileges that they've paid for, right? So. On a large scale, I think a lack of resources for pre-check and TSA generally may serve as a disincentive for travelers to sign up for the program. You pay for it, but then you, on your regular travel schedule, you rarely get to use it, right? So is this a challenge beyond my own airport, I guess I'm asking, and how would you suggest that TSA address the issue? Uh, yes, it's a, it's a problem at our airport, too, uh, that pre-check line at each security checkpoint is not open the entire time, and it is based on resources. Um, I was mentioning earlier that we sit down with TSA every day and go through the loads and what we see yeah. the passenger traffic to be like, and we try and best use their resources, but the reality is their resources are limited, so yeah. the reality is that those checkpoints are closed sometimes. Okay. Thank you. Um, uh, to both Ms. Day and Mr. Alterman, um, I know you've addressed in some of your testimony, but I'd, I'd like to explore it a little bit more, uh, the issue of violence in the unsecured parts of our airports. Uh, we know over the last uh, few years we have seen several troubling incidents of violence in these so-called non-sterile areas. Um, the 2013 incident at the Los Angeles International Airport where um, a TSA officer was murdered. Um, and earlier this year, the active shooter who killed five people near the baggage claim area in Fort Lauderdale. Last spring, we saw suicide explosions occurring in public areas at Brussels and in Istanbul. Um, so I know that this securing these areas requires um, cooperation between TSA, local police, uh, and airport officials. So I just would love to hear, uh, maybe starting with Mr. Alterman, has your advisory committee looked at ways to improve security in the public areas, and I'd love some recommendations about how to do it. And Ms. Day, you touched on it briefly, but if you have anything to add after Mr. Alterman speaks, that would be great. Thank you, Senator. Um, actually, the Aviation Security Advisory Committee has not been involved in public area security, okay. but there's a reason for that, and it's not because TSA is not doing something about it. Yeah. Well before F Fort Lauderdale happened, the TSA has established something called the Public Area Security Summit. We've had three meetings of that summit so far. The most recent one was last Friday. That summit brings together all the elements that you mentioned because they're all involved in the process. The airport directors, the FSDs, the local law enforcement, the airport law enforcement. Uh, there are so many jurisdictions involved that we've got to find a way to have coordination among those officials mm -hmm. so that hopefully we can prevent incidents, but if an incident happens, we need to understand who's in charge and how things are yeah. going to work. Um, the next meeting of the summit is April 26th, and we're, what we're trying to do is put together a framework. And you're dealing with an inherently public area, yeah. um, and you're going to have a public area no matter where you put the checkpoint. Right. You could shut down, you know, have to check in at the door, but then you'd have groups of people outside the door. Yeah. So it, it's, it's a real challenge. I, th I think that, that the way TSA is looking at this is it's, it's got to be, w one thing I've discovered, and I'm not an airport guy, I'm a cargo guy, right. but just like different segments of the aviation industry are not the same, every airport is not the same. Yeah. And, and, and the one thing we've discovered is each airport has different risks and different requirements. And so whatever, whatever is done as a result of this Public Area Security Summit, it's got to be airport specific because each airport is different. Okay. And so what I, my guess is going to come out of this will be a framework of how airports can deal with a menu of options depending on their unique needs. Um, 
it's difficult. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure I could ever tell you that we're going to get to a system in the public area where we're always safe because we're dealing in the, in the, in the public area. But the use of canines, again, as deterrence, uh, the cooperation between the various police forces, I, I think TSA understands this now. Uh, they've understood it for a while, and, and they've taken the action to put together this summit, and that's, that's where we're going in that area. Thank you. If I could add, I totally agree with the dogs. Um, I think also there's a lot of technology being evol evolved today that is passive, yeah. uh, that you won't even know you're going through. We tested a, we had a pilot going in January of uh, a device that you could install in the doors of an airport that could detect large masses of metal, Okay. right? Yep. Um, there are lots of other technologies. There are things we could put on the train that goes from downtown to the airport that you as a, as a train passenger would not even know that, you know, yep. whether it is metal detection or uh, explosive detection at the base of an elevator. I mean, there are lots of, there are a lot of options out there that are, the technology mm -hmm. that's being evolved today is amazing. Great. And hopefully we can integrate that into our facilities in the next few years. Thank you very much. And, and Mr. Chair, thank you for indulging my going over. So